Hello guys, it's Pastor Bobby Wright here again with you with another exciting message. I'm going to go through um, with you the word 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. I'm only going to read you one verse today. I don't want to give you too much at a time, amen? But verse 3 in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 reads as this, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Pastor Paul is saying, or Apostle Paul is saying that we should not offend anybody. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is the perfect gentleman? That the Holy Spirit will not offend, but the Holy Spirit will, if he's dwelling in you, is a perfect gentleman. That means if you go to a Baptist church, where they don't believe in speaking in tongues. Are you going to get up and automatically start speaking in tongues? A lot of the tongues are traditional. Just because uh, daddy and mama and grandpa done it, then we feel that we have to do it. I've been blessed with the gift of tongues. I only use tongues once ever blue moon because I really believe that some people misuse this gift. They use it to edify their self instead of edifying the church as it should be used. Um, in praise, it's wonderful. You'll, you'll see somebody praising the Lord, speaking in a heavenly language to their self. They're talking to God. It's a language between you and God. I believe also that people do really do it traditionally. They'll, they do it to be seen. They do it because they've seen someone else do it. Some preacher told them it was the right thing to do. But speaking in tongues is like everything else. The Holy Spirit will be a perfect gentleman. Now to clear something up, I'm non-denominational. I don't, I don't have anything against anybody, Baptist, Methodist, uh, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, whatever you are. As long as you're serving Jesus, then I believe and I cannot judge you that you are lined up to go to heaven. You said you were saved. It's not up to me to say you're not saved, no matter how you dress no matter how you look, no matter how you talk, no matter how you walk, it's not up to me to judge. That's what we have to get as a church, the revelation of being non-judgmental, to love everyone as they are. What if, uh, take for instance, you, uh, the uh, Apostle Paul said that we shouldn't offend anybody. What if someone comes into your church um, looking and, and already been turned away by other churches and that morning or that night they they have alcohol on their breath um, a lot of preachers if they smelled alcohol the first thing they would do instead of preaching the message that God has given them they will change their message and they will start automatically preaching on alcohol or against alcohol just because that person sitting in their audience in their congregation, that visitor, which has already been called a drunk and an alcoholic by his family, by the world, by other churches, he knows that he's an alcoholic. He don't need you to tell that. But what he really needs you to do is not offend him and embarrass him in front of the whole church, but he wants to feel like he's welcome. You need to learn to love everybody as they are. Jesus said, whosoever will come into me shall be saved. We cannot give offense if someone comes in using drugs. Even if they tell you, I'm high this morning, what should you say? Say, well, praise God, at least you're here. And then preach the word of God, plant the seed, and let God give the increase in that life. I believe that love is the most powerful thing on the face of the planet. I've seen a lot of preachers get up and preach against something that, that happens to be in their church that morning or that evening or whatever. Take, for instance, what if a gay person came into your church? What if a person... Um, now, I used to be one of the biggest homophobics around. I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Cartersville, Georgia. I've been in the military. Um, you know, I mean, to me, tradition says hate those people. Um, to, but to hate... God does not hate anybody. What if they come into your church? What if they're dressed differently? What if it's a if it's a woman that looks like a man or vice versa? The first thing probably that that so-called preacher or pastor is going to do is get up there and preach against 
that particular thing that morning or that evening and all he's doing is making his self or he thinks he is look good but really they are showing their ignorance you are to go up to that person regardless of what they look like what their lifestyle is if they're drunk if they're stoned or whatever and say you're welcome in this place we love you praise God and then ask God what you should preach that morning or what you should teach or, or et cetera, et cetera. But I guarantee you, God is not going to give you a message that morning to offend somebody. Because Apostle Paul said, don't offend anybody. Don't offend. Did you know that Christians sometimes are just rude? That, that some people are just rude that calls themselves a Christian. I know a, a lot of Christians that'll go to conferences and they'll just get out of a church service and they'll go to a restaurant and they'll be rude to their waitress or waiter and they'll, you know, just run them to death and then leave a dollar tip. There'll be 15 of them at the table and they'll leave a dollar. And you know what the waitress and the waiters say? They say, I hate to see that church crowd come. The church crowd should be the biggest tippers in the world. We ought to show our appreciation when no one else does. The same thing in our church. We should be givers, not only of ourselves, but of our finances, of our talents, of our trades, and work together in the church. People say, well, you know, if they've got sin in their life, um, you can welcome them in the church and you can love them and you can hug them, but you can't let them step foot on the stage. I had a lady tell me that yesterday, that you can't let them step foot on the stage. And why not? Jesus sat with the sinners. Jesus said, I come to save the lost, that those who already are well have no use for a physician. But we are, you know, they say, well, you shouldn't get them on stage. You shouldn't let them be in a leadership position. You shouldn't, shouldn't let them play an instrument. You shouldn't let them do this. You shouldn't let them do that. Um, you, you know, you got to first wait till they get cleaned up. Let me tell you something. Look in the mirror. If everybody with sin in their life could not be used in the church in a leadership position, the church door would be locked right now if the truth was told. You know how I got past all this? I looked in the mirror one day. I looked at myself. And I said, you know what, Bobby? You've got a lot of work to do in your life. Now, I'm not saying that I go out and sin intentionally every day. That I go down to 14th Street and pick up prostitutes and say, I'll pray for God to forgive me later. Or, or I use God's name in vain. Or, or drink. Or even do drugs. Or whatever. But I have my shortcomings in my life. So do preachers. So do pastors. So does every leader in the church. I want you to get this. No one's perfect. Before you look at someone else's sin, look at your own. But remember, you are born into sin. You will never be perfect until you make it to heaven to be with Jesus there and forevermore. You will not be perfect walking on this earth. Does that mean we condone sin? No, absolutely not. But the Bible says don't offend anybody. That means as long as they're in church, as long as they're, you know, and some people, uh, there's only three sins in the world, drinking, doing drugs, and homosexuality. That's the only sin there are. But as you know, gossiping on Facebook's a sin. Did you know gossiping, period, is a sin? Did you know that that the moment you step out your door, if you think a wrong thought, that that's a sin, that that entered your mind? God said you might as well do it. You've already committed that sin in your heart. There's more sins than just adultery and fornication and homosexuality and drinking and doing drugs. There's all manner of sin. The thing about it to do is strive daily to be like Jesus. Strive daily to be like Jesus. And live this life. Strive to be like Jesus. Amen. I'm going to be back with another message on this. This is Pastor Bobby Wright. Won't you visit our church at 27 C and D Maple Ridge Drive, Cartersville, Georgia? Come and see us. I want you to be blessed. God bless you. And we'll be back with another video shortly. We'll see you later. Okay. God